All right. This, I promise, is the last time we're going to step back into P3 and P4. But we need to touch upon this, especially P4, to finish off the section on graphing uh, rational functions. So we're going to start out with rational equations in P3 and then deal with rational inequalities in P4. So with rational equations, basically equations with fractions in them, it's a fancy way of saying that, we're going to start off by factoring the denominators. because we're going to need to find a least common denominator uh, to multiply by. So x plus 1, there's nothing much to do. 1 doesn't even look like it has a denominator, but remember we can always put things over 1, because anything over 1 is just itself. We don't change anything. But 2x minus 2 and 2x plus 2 things will get rather messy rather fast if we don't factor these out. We can factor a 2 out of both of them. So if we do this, we're going to get x minus 1, 2 times x minus 1 in the first fraction. Second fraction on the left stays as it is because that's about as factored as you can get. I don't know what you could pull out of that except for 1. Um, on the second one, factoring out a 2, or rather on the right hand side, first one on the right hand side, factoring out a 2 leaves you with 2 over 2 times the quantity x plus 1. And because we're going to need common denominators and I'd like everything in sight to have a denominator, I'm going to leave this as 1 over 1 rather than simplifying it to just 1. Well, I can actually do a little canceling here. 2 goes into 6 three times and into 2 once. So I'm left with 3 over x minus 1 minus 1 over x plus 1. That equals 1 over x plus 1 plus, and again, I'm leaving this last term as 1 over 1. Now, the nice part about doing that is, you know, now we have some repetition, x plus 1, x plus 1. Whereas, if we left it as this, our least common denominator could get rather large if we weren't smart about things. Whereas here, it's going to be a lot easier to find our least common denominator, which is our next step. Our least common denominator, let's see. Right now, I've got nothing in my LCD. So the first one, x minus 1, the first denominator, needs to go in there. I have x minus 1, but not x plus 1. So I've got to throw an x plus 1 into my LCD. Let's see, x plus 1. Well, I already have x plus 1 in my denominator, so I don't need to repeat it. And 1, well, 1 is always in my denominator. You know, 1 times anything is still itself, so 1 is already there. So this is my least common denominator. And once we have it, we're going to multiply both sides by the least common denominator. Now, there's another way around this problem, around all rational equations. That's to move everything to one side, combine fractions, factor, cancel, set the numerator equal to zero, and you're done. Um, but this way, I think, students tend to prefer because what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of these ugly fractions. Fractions are rather hard to work with. 
and we'd like to get rid of them as soon as possible. And that's what this method does. So on the left, I'm going to multiply both terms by the LCD. And on the right, being lazy, I'm just going to write it as LCD over here. Again, this is the LCD. 1 over x plus 1 plus and now I can just write this 1 over 1 as 1 because by the time I'm done there's going to be no fractions in sight. So this LCD needs to distribute to both terms on the left and to both terms on the right. So we're going to have x minus 1 times x plus 1 times 3 over, forgive my poor memory, x minus 1. And then the LCD multiplies the next term, x minus 1 times x plus 1. And that's going to multiply the second term, which is 1 over x plus 1. And then on the right-hand side, we'll have, again, the least common denominator times whatever it was, x plus 1. I should have remembered that. It's the same thing as the inner two terms are the same. And then I remember what this is. This is just 1, but it's the LCD times 1. Again, I'm taking this a bit slow. You don't have to write out you know, all these steps and be as um, you know, tedious as I'm being here. But I'm just trying to make these ideas fairly clear. So I've got x minus 1 on top and an x minus 1 on bottom in the first term they'll cancel. Second term, x plus 1's cancel. Third term, again, x plus 1's cancel. Fourth term, nothing cancels because there's no denominator here. So that's fine. So let's see, I've got what's left over? x plus 1 times 3. So that's 3x plus 1. I'll distribute a little bit later. Again, I'm, I'm being rather tedious here then x minus 1 times 1, or 1 times x minus 1, then 1 times x minus 1, and then plus x minus 1 times x plus 1 as the last term. So now I'm going to distribute. Let's see, that's 3x plus 3. The nice part about being tedious here is that a common mistake students are going to make is you know, just making the x negative and not distributing this negative to the negative 1. Because what we should get is we should get minus x plus 1. So in this case, it can pay to be a bit pedantic. 1 times anything is just itself. I'm going to FOIL this out, so that's uh, x squared plus x minus x minus 1. What do I have on the left now? 3x minus x is 2x, 3 plus 1 is 4, so 2x plus 4. Let's see, I like my squareds first when they're the largest. Let's see. Plus x minus x will cancel. So I just have 1x, so that will be plus 1x or plus x. Minus 1 minus 1 is a minus 2. Now, you should be back in somewhat familiar territory. Finish it off. 
I've got x's, I've got numbers, I've got x squareds, I've got a quadratic. So I need everything on one side. So I'll subtract 2x from both sides, and I will subtract 4 eventually. So this is x squared minus x minus 6. Uh, so leading coefficient is 1, 1, and minus 6. Multiply to minus 6. Factors of minus 6 that add to a minus 1. How about minus 3 and 2? So doing the zigzag x squared minus 3x plus 2x so x squared minus 3x plus 2x minus 6 now factoring by grouping we get let's see I can factor an x out of the first two out of these two and then out of these two, I can pull out a 2. And that, thankfully, leaves me with two things in parentheses that are exactly the same. So I can factor those out. And they leave me with x plus 2. And now I have the nice product resulting in 0, which means the only way two numbers can multiply together and result in zero is if one of those two numbers is zero. So either x minus 3 is zero, which would mean x equals 3, or the number x plus 2 is zero, which means that x is minus 2. So these are our two solutions. But we do need to be rather careful. We need to check, but we don't really need to do a full check like with radical equations or quadratic-like equations. We basically just need to check that our solutions don't make any denominator zero. If one solution makes any one of the denominators zero. Doesn't have to be all, just one of them. If it makes one of them zero, that particular solution is out. So three and minus two. Does three make any of these denominators zero? Well, six minus two, four. No, three plus one, four. No, two times three is six, plus two is eight, nope, and one is not zero. So three works. What was the other one? The other one I believe was minus two. Plug in minus two. Two times minus two is minus four. Minus four minus two is minus six. That's not zero. Minus two plus one is minus one. That's not zero. Two times minus two is minus four. Minus four plus two is a minus two. That is also not zero. And one isn't zero. So both work. We could have x being minus 2, or we could have x being 3. And that's the basic idea of rational equations.